Welcome back, guys. Ball from Assembly Hall podcast. We got a big time guest right here. My main man, Miller Cop, all time leader in Big Ten games played. Um, started 144 games out of his career. Uh, finished at Indiana, but graduated from Northwestern. Got a chance to, you know, play both sides a little bit. So we just want to talk a little bit. First of all, congratulations, bro, on a hell of a career. Uh, this big time, man. Thank you, thank um, you. You know how hard I know how hard it is playing in the Big Ten night in and night out. You went to another Jeez. Big Ten school, which is crazy, bro. So just want to talk to you a little bit about, man. Tell me what you got going on. Tell me how you feel. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the season, bro. Man, the season was was uh, well. First off, thanks for having me on, man. I'm I'm glad uh-huh. we could chop it up. And uh, you know, basically, you know, the season I think went, you know, it went well. I enjoyed it, man. I, it, you know, obviously, the last go around is kind of bittersweet, but um, right. you know, I came into the season with a great perspective on um, the year and and a you know full commitment to you know just winning as many games as possible. You know, that was really my only thing, and um, you know. To start to start the year off, really, you know, I mean, you guys know as players is, you know, after every season, you've got your exit meeting. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, after my first year in Indiana, um, didn't go as, you know, as, as I wanted it to. And, and, you know, there were ups and downs and struggles and stuff, you know, um, you know, what really your season starts, you know, after that exit meeting. You know, because you have a little direction, you have right. you have the ability to kind of see where you stand in things, whether uh, playing wise, skill wise, and so my season started last year, you know, right after that exit meeting, and 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 no one really knows this story is that, um, you know, Woody pissed me off in that meeting, like big time, like okay, like lit a fire under me, like for the whole season. I don't even know if he probably doesn't even remember it, but uh, I, uh, you know, he, you know, going to the meeting, I'm like, man, like who who knows what he's gonna say, whatever, and. You know, I know I'm coming back, so I'll tell him that, you know, but well, he asked me a couple of questions that, that like, that hurt, that, that pissed me off, you know, because I'm a competitive. Right. right so yeah. he, asked, he asked me, simple, to the point, but just gut checks, right? He goes, he has two questions that I'll never, never forget. He said, why didn't you make shots? <laughs> okay. Mind you, I was, mind you, I shot 36 and three. So it's not like yeah. like I did it, like I was like at eighteen, right? Right. That made me mad. Like I'm, I, I like it. when I hear that, like I'm starting to sweat. My heart's racing. Yeah, like that's what that's what I do. Like don't like yeah, yeah like disrespect like, me a little bit. Shots, right? Why right. did you make shots? And number two, this one really got me. It, he said, "Was the stage too big?" And you know, as yeah. a as a that's player, that cut your light on. That cut your light on, right? There. As a competitor, that was you know the you know, at that point, I wanted to walk out. I'm like, man, screw this, screw you. Like, I'm done. Like, I already told you I'm coming back. Like, I don't need to hear anything else. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll see you when we start workouts, whenever they start. Over. And so he's so that moment is where my season started. Mm-hmm. And Damn. I, uh, you know, that lit a fire under me through you know the whole off season, the preseason, and then leading into the season to where you know before every single game, you know, at Indiana, every game feels like. Um, you know, uh, 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 the biggest stage, right? And so right. that's telling myself, I'm like, okay, like it's not the biggest stage. Okay, when we play Purdue, it's not the biggest stage. Oh, okay, right. when we play Big Ten tournament, it's a big enough stage. You know, are we? And that's just what I, uh, NCAA tournament first round is this the biggest stage? Like, mm-hmm. I get to the point where I'm like crazy enough to like fire myself up about it, mm-hmm. and you know that's stuck in my mind throughout the whole entire season. So. In terms of that, I I feel proud of you know how I how I performed and how I improved and truly kind of how I you know answered those two questions. If yeah, you, you know he can't ask me those two questions now in our exit meeting. Yeah. Um, right, 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 right. You know, I got know, a he- question, bro. I got a question for you. Just as a as a shooter, um, you know, I watched a lot of games this year. I watched pretty much all of them, bro. And it was like a lot of inconsistencies. It's like far as like where your shots was going to come from. And where he was going to get them and when he was going to get them and how you were going to get them. Like, how was that? Like, just because it was so inconsistent and kind of unpredictable. It's like where you was going to get the ball, where your shots was going to come from. You know what I'm saying? I kind of gave you, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I kind of gave you a little shit just because I felt like you wanted, I wanted you to shoot the ball more. And I know you'll look yeah, back on your both career. Yeah. I know, like, I, we played with Jordy. Jordy coached you. We was the same way on him. Like, bro, 
if you can see the rim, like shoot the ball. Like, so how was that like for you? You know what I'm saying? Like just dealing with the inconsistencies of where your shots were going to come from. Yeah. I mean, it, it, oh, first off, that's the toughest part that, that I struggled with my first year here. I didn't know mm -hmm. where any of my shots were coming from. You know, there's some right. games like I'd have, you know, shoot 10 shots. Another game, I wouldn't shoot one. You know, right. I put a goose egg right. attempt wise. So mm -hmm. it's like, as a shooter, you know how hard yeah. that is? You go, you may go a week without shooting a, a, a ball in a game. You're right. Like, it's, it's, yeah. That's it's tough. Crazy. That's tough. But yeah. again, you miss, shooter, everything's yeah. magnified in Indiana, bro. You go 0 for 3. Yeah, it's like you went 0 for 10, bro. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's what, that's what exactly. I'm asking, bro. Like, no, it's tough. It, people. It's hard mentally, like you said, because, you know, mm -hmm. you go, okay, say you go 0 for 2 in a game, right? And then mm -hmm. the next game, you're like 0 for 1. And the next game, you're 1 for 3. And then it's easy to look back and you're like, hey, I'm like 1 for 7 my last 7 shots. It's like, right, yeah, what's right. going yeah. on here? But the yeah. games that I felt like I've had the opportunity to shoot 7 plus 3s, 8 plus 3s, I've mm -hmm. made half, you know, for like, sure. like yeah. it's Arizona. I, I always think back to it as like, when I started like, Oh, for four and mm -hmm. I ended, you know, five for eight or, or no, no, four for eight or five for nine or something like that. So yeah, it's one of those things where if I can find those shots, I feel confident about them going in, but it's just, you know, again, as, as you know, role plays a part in, in the other guys on the team. And as a shooter, you don't have the ball in your hands. You know, right. I, I didn't have any plays ran for me. So it's like, I'm just being opportunistic, running in transition and trying to just mm -hmm. yeah, get lost. Yeah. Lose guys. But that's one of the things I wanted to ask you, Miller, is because, you know, we would talk a lot about that. Like, damn, there'd be instances, like you said, we, you'd go 0 for 3 in the game. And we we talk on here about how does Miller get going? And then you have a game, like you said, you'd go 5 for 9, you'd go 4 for whatever. And it's like, damn, okay, now he's seen the ball go in a few times. Like, here it goes. But the entire time, you know, Christian and I, obviously you, the whole team, pretty much the whole state knows this offense is run through Trace. Yep. Mm -hmm. So how much did that dictate the game for you? Because, you know, Christian and I will talk about it. Like, when Trace is rolling, baby, you've got to go through him. You've got to go where your bread is buttered. So right. we got to throw it in thing? there. Like, no matter what, yeah, no matter yeah. how we want to play, we got to throw it in, you know? Got to throw it in there, but like as a shooter, and a guy who shoots the ball at a high clip like you do, does that mess with your mentals a little bit? Like I know I should shoot this, but Trace right now is really, really hot. Let's feed the beast. There's, there's always that thought in the head. Like you know, I'm, I'm a guy who, you know, like I said at the beginning of this, like I wanted to win this year. That's it. Mm -hmm. So whatever we had, our best chance to win, like that. That's what I was doing, right? And so right. I love Trace. I wanted to give him ball, the ball as much as possible because. You know, I know guys aren't helping off me. It's going to give him more mm -hmm. space, you know. Right. And, you know, I don't know what the analytics are or the stats are, but I'd, I'd probably say that 80, 70% of my shots, assisted shots, came from him. Right. So, yeah. When yeah. he had the ball, good things happened for me too. You know, right. so that's that was my mindset, whether I'm throwing it in, knowing that I'm getting to the, you know, cutting and getting to the weak side to where he can sling it across the court or – you know, I'm sliding to the soft spot in the zone where, or, or, you know, on the wing where the guy has to, you know, respect me or he's going to go double right. and shoot it. Right. So, right. You know, right. I, I got, I got good at playing off him, but, you know, at the same time, it's about, you know, like you said, knowing you're, knowing where your bread's buttered. Right. Yeah. I got another well, thing, bro. Done. Go ahead. Dude. Go ahead. See. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead well, I was going to, I was going to touch on that first point that you said about the questions. Um, and, and uh, Woody talking to you about is the stage too big? Um, that kind of dives into what I wanted to originally ask you was like, what is that difference for you? Because obviously you play four years at Northwestern, then you leave, and now you have the opportunity to play against Northwestern. But like Siwat said, like this stage at Indiana, man, it's just it's it's dumb. Like to be honest with you, it's it's stupid. Like I, there's so much writing on that six banner. It's all anybody ever talks about. So like, how was that stage for you? Was it? Oh shit! Like, look what we get at IU, or is it just like, hey, this is business as usual? You're saying when I went to play it at Northwestern? Yeah, when you were at Northwestern, like the differences. Like oh yeah, yeah. So man, it, it was you know I was thinking about this earlier. Is is um, there was a, you know obviously as you know in, in you know the day and age now, social media is everything you know in terms right. of how things are communicated, how people meet, how people connect, mm -hmm. and so you know at Northwestern. You know, after a game, like, 
whatever we lost or you know maybe we won you know whatever it was you know you just like everybody does you search your name up on twitter right, right. Hell yeah you know, yeah, like, yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, well, we didn't get that. And that's the thing, Miller. We didn't really get that shit. I think Twitter came yeah. on what? See, our junior years or yeah. something. Yeah, like that. It, so, it was. But we were still it, doing it though. We was getting. We was getting. Yeah. You know, it was. It was starting out. That was when it was first. Yeah, started, it was right? just started. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you know, you search your name up, and there's like probably two, three tweets, right? You're right. Okay. That's about, about it, right? Even yeah. after a loss, like you go, you go, you have a bad game. Boom, that two, three tweets. You know, maybe three or four. I don't yeah. know what. But you have a bad game here. <laughs> Man. You, you better not search Miller Cop in that in that search bar and, and click search because you will not feel good about yourself at, for the next like hour. Like, right, no doubt. You're like, dang. Man. Like, do I have a really you crazy, game? bro? Do I deserve to be in Indiana? Like it, you know, it, it messes with you, you know, like that's, that's a huge, you know, difference is, is the level of expectation, the, the level yeah. of, uh, again, media and, and eyes and, and all that stuff. So that's, a, that's a huge one. And, and that's, I mean, that's a great point. Cause Christian and I, you know, we had damn near an entire episode of like these do Cause I think it was January where there was that three game stand. You lose to Iowa, you get blown out by, uh, Penn State and Northwestern, I think, at home. And I, I think our whole episode, Christian, was like, these fucking guys got to stay off of Twitter because that shit, yeah. there's no, yeah, because if true. I'm looking up your name, it's so shit. Yeah, and I yeah feel bro. Bad for we you. felt like, and y'all, and y'all, granted, bro, it's a totally different generation. Y'all different. So y'all going to really speak y'all mind. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to really speak y'all own narrative. And I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We battled with that a little bit. Like, you know, because it's just not. I feel like it's just not gonna win with that shit. Like with any yeah, other people, like you never you will. Know, you know, you're never gonna win, bro. You never, you never gonna win. Will. But I do want to talk to you a little bit, man. I do want to give you credit though, bro, because I feel like your defense just improved from like the first year to your second year. A lot of people don't talk about that, man. So I want to give you credit for that. But like, just what was the biggest difference on that end? Like, what did you do as far from year one to year two? Because a lot of the times, bro, down the stretch, you may have been on the primary guy, or you may have been on the second primary guy. Like, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, I, I wanted to, you know, you know, some of the best, and I, I put this out, you know, you probably saw my tweet. I put this out. Some of the best advice I ever got, you know, before mm -hmm. I came to college was, you know, from Kellen Sampson. You know, I was asking him before I came to Northwestern, um, mm -hmm. just a hungry dude who wants to play, who wants to win and, and wants to get on the court. That's every freshman's mm -hmm. goal, you know, right. is, is to get on the court, especially if there's a chance, there's an opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. So I asked him, I was like, like, how do I get on the court? What do I do you know, right. as a coach? And I was already committed to Northwestern. He was just giving me some, you know, some, some game. And so uh, he said, when the coach trusts you on defense, you'll, number one, get on the court. Yeah. And number mm -hmm. two, have more freedom offensively. Mm -hmm. And so that not only speaks true to their program, because that looks like that's, that's how they, they rock over there. But yeah, no doubt. It, it's, every, it's every basketball team, right? And so – that's that was my again coming in as a as a uh, new guy at Indiana. I was like, I'm I'm pretty much a freshman, you know. I, I yeah. don't have any equity. I don't have any equity built up with Coach Woody. I got to earn his trust on defense to get on the court. And so yeah. that was my main focus last year. And 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 you know, Dane Fife helped me out with with a bunch of like film, you know, angles, you know, mm -hmm. uh, all the little stuff that no one really thinks about. Um, and then uh, I'm not. And then most of it is just. It's just your grit, man. You gotta want to do it. You know, right. you got no doubt. you got to no study doubt. it. You got to see dudes. You got to watch what dudes do. Like you know, ba you know, guys offensively usually catch the ball in the same spot most of the game. They they they, yeah. you know, it, it's guys are real predictable, especially in the Big Ten. You have a body of work of film to look at them. So right, that was it for me. But the biggest thing, man, is is a film, but also is you just gotta want to do it. You gotta play your ass off. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt, no, no doubt. doubt. Are you saying that because I, I, man, nah, I came. Bro, I see you, bro. I see you. You know, I watch the game from a lot of different perspectives, bro. Yeah. And I see you. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people don't give you credit. Don't give you credit. The credit you deserve for that, bro. You made big time leaps and, and bounds. You know what I'm saying? Garden. So that's big time, bro. Congratulations yeah. on that, man. Yeah. yeah. Miller, what's it? What's it like? Uh, you know, Christian and I talked about this because there was a step too. Uh, I don't know if you know much about our backgrounds. You probably know Christian a lot more than mine. Um, but you know, there was an opportunity there and a lot of people probably don't know, but 
after our sophomore year, there was a lot of talk about Christian, myself. There was a couple others that were trying to, not trying to, maybe see what a little bit, but trying to take off. Right. Uh, you know, it, it crept into our heads that like this shit is just, it's too hard. And, we, you know, we, we don't have a lot of, you know, see Watts terms. We don't have a lot of Jimmys and Joes on this team. We really didn't. Uh, so the thought of taking off and going somewhere else crept into a couple of our minds. But ultimately, we came back and, and had the two seasons that we did. But for you, when you leave Northwestern and you have that opportunity for two years to play against them, what is that like? Like, what's that like seeing Collins and, and your old teammates playing against them? What's that like? And it was wild. It it uh it was something that uh, it was bittersweet because especially the first time we played them, mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of wild circumstances. You know, in the game, you know, you know, with what happened, you know, off the court and the the, the yeah yeah the guys that we had on the court uh, right yeah so so we, yeah so we were that Locked was up wild. is what it was <laughs> it's fucking yeah stupid shit is what it was no <laughs> yeah so we uh that was not was kind of added thrown in the mix but you know that first year was wild because um you know my two best friends my roommates you know pete nance and ryan greer uh guys i spent you know, you know in college i mean you, your your best friends is you know they're on the team like yeah. you yeah, spend five yeah. percent of three years with somebody right like right. yeah that's tough. it's crazy it's special and so we're texting before the game and like they don't know that like six guys are not going to play and so i'm texting them before the game like <laughs> I'm like, yo, you guys don't know what's 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 coming, man. Damn. You guys have no idea. And yeah. uh, but, but look, that stuff is, is is special because I'll, I'll remember those moments for the rest of my life. But you know, even but but specific, specifically this year, it was, you know, it was terrible. Like number one, we didn't beat them. Number two, right. you know, when I went there, it was like you know the worst game of my life in terms mm-hmm. of the experience. You know, right. and and, and uh, you know, I lost a lot of you know. All my respect for yeah, yeah. I saw you out on Twitter talking that about people. It. Yeah, like you know, I, 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 you know, even the 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 BS message they they you know tweeted out after you know I thought was from from the AD or whoever it was. Like they didn't name me. They didn't say anything yeah. about specifics. Yeah, um, yeah. it's kind of tacky to me, man. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's easy to do that. You know, two days mm-hmm. after it happened, when 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 people got got wind of you know of it and it made the university look bad. Right. But, right. Um, you know, in that aspect, you know, it is what it is, but it made me stronger and it made me, you know, gave me perspective knowing that, man, I, I, I've been through the ringer with that. Like no one, I, I don't know. I don't know who you are, but, but I know for a fact you haven't been through that. So it's like, you know, it, it gives me, you know, something to, to, you know, uh, you know, work through and, and, uh, you know, makes me a lot stronger. But I will say, you know, I have all the love in the world for that staff, man. They, they, yeah. they are big time. They're always, you know, looking out for me and 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 want to see me succeed. And so, you know, Collins and um, you know, BJ and everybody that 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 was there with me, I, I love them to death. So that's yeah, that's the one, you know, real consistent. And the guys, obviously, I play with. So yeah, for sure, yeah. I, I look over at Chris Collins at, at, after games, and I just think, like, dude, like just being out of it now and, and being a part of coaching staffs and, and different changes throughout our system at Indiana. It's like, it's just, you look at a guy differently and you look at him and you just say, damn, like people would succeed with him. He just looks like he just like takes you under his wing and just he loves you. Yeah. Right? He, he did that for me. You know, th- you know, that was the biggest thing for me. He, we had a good relationship and, and, you know, he wanted truly wants the best for me. So. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Dope. Good to hear. That's dope. But talk to me a little bit about man going forward, bro. What you think about the program? Which, well, how do you feel the state of the program? Um, talk a little bit about Woody and just how you feel the program is going to succeed going forward. I think a lot of us um, fans, I know, give give Woody a hard time just because it's the expectations of Indiana basketball is just so high, it's almost unrealistic to a, to a sense. You know what I'm saying? But talk to me a little bit about that, bro. Well, the good thing about Woody is the fact that he doesn't hear or see or care about any expectation. That's what I tell people yeah. all the time. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think yeah. he cares. Like, I understand. The guy, the guy, and I, I, you know, he's done everything you can do in, in your career. He's played at the, at the highest level. He's, you know, won awards. He's, he's, you know, coached at the highest level. I mean, the guy was a coach for the New York Knicks. Like, You're right. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have to come back. You know, he mm-hmm. didn't have to be a coach at Indiana. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. 
you know, he truly like wants to win more than anything. And then he'll be done. Like he'll, he'll have done anything. What else does he want to do? He's right, won right. championships. He's, he's done, you know, playoff, all, everything. Right. And so, you know, I, I truly believe and, and know that the program's in a good spot because he's at the helm and he's really getting the hang of, you know, the college life, the college, um, you know, message, uh, the NIL stuff. You know, I don't even think he, he, uh, you know, he doesn't worry about that. At least I don't think. Uh, yeah. In terms of like, yeah. he's, he's more yeah. big picture. Like, hey, we need a, we need a win. I'm. All, he's all thinking about the court, the court, the court. So, right, right, right. Uh, right. You know, obviously that stuff's in place, but, but he, uh, you know, he's he he keeps the main thing the main thing, right? And so, um, I think what I am interested to see is is how, um, you know, the team looks without a guy, you know, like Trace. You know, that's what I'm interested in. I just want to know how he's going to play. Like I hear yeah. a lot of fans hear what he say. He don't necessarily. He's just the first time he's ever had to really throw the ball inside in his career. Yeah. So I'm interested to see like how he's going to, you know, what I'm saying yeah. how we're going to play next year. Like I yeah. feel, feel like we're going to play more free and you know not through the post so much. So I'm interested yeah. to see how it's going to be, bro, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. But I do know at the, at the same time he he uh, you know he's got good he's got great people around him and he's he's seen so many different types of basketball that that yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna work what's what's he like off the court miller is he is he a guy that's down in the locker room because I, I, everybody sees the videos after a win and it's easy to celebrate and have fun after a win but like is he a guy who's down there with you guys climbing around or you know you see a lot of a couple of videos of him in practice he gets shots up like see what and i can say with maybe full fact that like bro, we never saw bro, Coach Green bro, shoot the ball. Miller, ever. bro, in four years, bro, I've never seen him shoot a ball. He'll <laughs> act like he gonna, he'll act like he gonna shoot it, but he would never shoot the ball. Yes, yes he just yes. throw it behind his head. <laughs> he just throw that bitch away, like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He he's 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 such a genuine guy. Like that's a real like first word and 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 main thing that I I always you know tell people and and think of is that and you're playing for a guy who. Once you're done, you know, he's going to look after you. Like anything he can do, he's definitely going to do. And I know that for a fact. And, and he says it all the time, but, you know, you know, it's easy for, to, to play for a guy like that, right? Right. Well, it has your best interest at heart. You know, maybe, you know, the basketball is a basketball, but at the end of the day, the guy's looking out for you, you know. But he is a guy that he does a great job of, you know, coaching you, being a head coach. But also being a guy who you can you can talk to, you know you can mm-hmm. you can um, you can you can go into his office and say, "Coach, I need some help," or uh, you know, "This yeah. is the this is this is what I'm struggling with." You know, he's that type of guy to where you know there's no doubt in my mind that um, you know I can you know anybody can can do that. Any of his players can do that. You know, but there are times when there are times when me and him have really got in, gotten into it just because we're competitors. You know, but that's good though. That's good. Yeah, though. yeah, that's what you need. At the end of the day, it's it's you know because we both want to win. There no shit. We we all had our arguments and, and fights. Jesus, and, and all that yeah. verbal as arguments. As a player, as a, as a coach on the coaching staff, man, yeah. we used to get into it all the time. Just but at the end of the day, you know, you make a good point. Like you guys both want the same thing. Like. As much as you hate a day where it's just like you feel like he's just picking on you and maybe he's not, but it's just your day, you're just like you know, a lot of times we would just say, Man, fuck this guy. But you know, we're all fighting for the same thing. So exactly. uh, that's it, it's good to hear because uh, you know, you see it, you see it out there, you wonder how mu- how much of that is, you know, because there's a camera in front of you, but it's good to hear you say that this guy is gonna take care of you past that. So it's good to hear. Miller, this is my last thing, bro. We're going to discuss this shit a little bit, man. I've been arguing with people a little bit about this shit. Why isn't the Big Ten <laughs> successful in the NCAA tournament this year? Talk to me, bro. What do you think it is? I got my opinions on it. Um, I just feel like we don't play the right, you know, the right style of basketball that'll really take us, you know, to that next level. I feel like other conferences may be, may have different types of skill sets where guys are longer and, you know, play different styles, but you look around, bro, we ain't had – only team we had was Michigan State. Even they struggled in the Big Ten this year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I yeah, feel like yeah. their personnel and their players a little bit was more so based for the NCAA tournament more so than the Big Ten. So talk to me so a little I, bit about it. What you think? I think it's a couple things. I think mm-hmm. I think it boils down to as, 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 you know, 
it's, it's a long season, right? Right. You know, mm-hmm. the, the first thing everybody says is like, you know, we wear each other out, right? Mm-hmm. But if yeah. you think about it, like you said, their style of play, that changes. That mm-hmm. changes how you play, the physicality, how you feel after the game, right? Mm-hmm. I think Big Ten's the most physical conference. It's the most scouted conference. It's the most pace-wise. I'd probably say it's one of the slowest, right? Right. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. Round yeah. down, physical. We're going to hit you mm-hmm. in the mouth, like that type of deal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think also it goes the latest, and and conference season yeah. starts yeah. the earliest. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So. So the conference tournament ends. No other conference tournament, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, in the in power six is like ending and then the champion is, you know, getting filmed. Selection Sunday. Yeah. yeah. On Sunday. Right? Yeah. So that that plays a that definitely plays a part in it. Um, like you but also like you said, the style of play is is maybe it's you know more conducive to, you know, a uh, uh, uh a situation where you can scout more, where you have some more time to, um, you know, really, really lock into a team. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think another thing that not many people, you know, kind of understand is like the teams, the teams that are in the, in the final four right now, right. We're all very guard head. Yeah. Guard, guard play wins in the tournament for sure. Like, yeah. I one of you know uh, Emmanuel Dildy, who's at uh, I think Oklahoma right now. He was at, with me at Northwestern. Mm-hmm. He always would would uh, you know be yelling for games like guards win games to hype up like the guards and, and the wings like guards right. win games guards win games. Yeah, like those are the guys who usually have the ball at the end of their at, at, at you know at the end of the no game, doubt. right? No and no so doubt. that doesn't take away anything at all from like great bigs at all. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's just that's potentially an aspect of like i don't know maybe maybe that's why it's it's a little it's it hasn't been there like even you know i'm thinking michigan state when they went to the final four um a couple years ago guard heavy yes they had bigs yes they played through bigs but they scored i remember it was like playing a track team yeah even this year bro they've been they was guard heavy exactly they they, they leaned on hoggard and the other guy um that's what they leaned on bro walker yeah so that's that's probably what I would say. But um, do you think do you think if we if we recruited and and changed our style of play and got long rangey guys, do you think it would be successful in the Big Ten, or you think it would only like you know like we would struggle in the Big Ten? I think I think it will work. I think it will work. But I think you got to have the right again. Like it's got to be the right type of guys. Like mm-hmm. you see you see teams yeah. like try to play. And and some successful, sometimes they're not. Like Nebraska wants to, you know, play smaller, uh, yeah. five out, play super fast. Mm-hmm. That hasn't worked, you know, as you know, tournament wise lately, right? But right. A, a team like yeah. Iowa, who's you know, Fran McCaffrey, who's been running, you know, his motion offense and and you know, playing and scoring in the nineties and eighties, like that's worked for them in terms of you know their. Big Ten success, tournament success, not right. as much. I don't think he's had the caliber players that uh, I think Indiana could get in terms of talent. For sure. For sure. I agree. I agree, too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I, so I yeah. totally agree with that statement. I feel like Iowa got – I went to the – actually, I went to the Auburn and in, um, Iowa game. I thought they got screwed a little bit just because they were playing at a location that was basically a home game for Auburn. Even though uh, Iowa had the higher seed, I just felt yeah, like that. was that. wild. That was That was, that was wild, bro. They got, they got screwed, bro. For real, honestly, yeah. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, look, it shouldn't. It shouldn't have been at, like that. Like that's crazy, but that's just that's yeah. Crazy. I look at the Big Ten season and I look at the tournament, and it's like it's almost like checkers and chess. Like you have to have the right pieces to get you through the Big Ten mm-hmm. to get you into that chess match of the, of the tournament. Yep. So mm-hmm. it's almost like to Christian's point, it's like how do we get those pieces that are like tournament successful but yeah, also do both. Get, can do both get, right. get you through the big 10 and, and i think for us it was really good because we had the guards i mean we relied on Vic and we Jordo. had it. we had it you we had a big uh i felt like this year we had it and then obviously you lose xavier and that really puts a that spin on and now the season right now no hurts that yeah hurt. yeah yep. yeah because you know we we say all the time like as much as we like xavier uh you know i a bit of you thinks that he's one of those players that can get himself out of control a lot. 
But also, that's the type of guy you need, the guy who's just like, fuck this, I can go get Especially in the tournament, we needed that. Especially in the tournament. So him going down, I think our, our tournament outcome probably changes a little bit. Uh, but yeah, man, you got to, it's a hard question because you got to find a way to get through all the, it's like a football league. You hear that all the time when you're talking to other coaches. Like yep. other coaches will say, don't go to the Big Ten because that's just a football league. Right. Um, so it's like you want that dynamic to change, but also like you got to win too in here. And there's some big dudes in this tournament. So yeah. uh, it's for me, it's, it's – And going off, going off that, I think it's two things that, I, that I've always mm-hmm. thought of. It's, it's like why teams win. Like why teams really win like when it matters. It's culture and talent. Like, again, like, I think the culture will get you through the grind, through the football season, right, through the conference season. And obviously you got to have some talent here and there, but, like, there are teams where, you know, like Northwestern, they don't have the five-star, you know, players, right. but they had right. culture this year, right? For sure. To get, yeah. get them to a, a top seed in the, in the you know, tournament, in the, in the Big Ten tournament too. And then – the talent, I believe, is what will get you really far to advance. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. That's there's, yeah. and they, they play off each other, but I I believe like Houston is is a, is another example. Like they have always like Kel, Kelvin Sampson, like he's got culture. Like they have a culture, mm-hmm. right? No and that talent has helped them again mm-hmm. succeed and get through and and games where guys just need to be you know dudes need to be dudes. They do what they do, right? That's the yeah. talent that gets them yeah. the last three buckets in a row or whatever it is, you know? Right, right. You said something right. there, bro. Talent and culture. It's going, that's probably going to be the name of this episode, so you just drop the ball. That's it. That's it. That's so, it. But, man, we appreciate Miller, you, bro. I got one more for you, Miller. What's, right, what's next for you, man? What are you, you, uh, what are you working out? Are you working out to go somewhere? You Yeah. Uh, you know, right now I'm just getting healthy. You know, I'm, I'm, you know I was dealing with, with the injury kind of uh, at the end of the year and, and – just play through it. You guys know how it is. Just you, know, yeah. you want to be there for your team. And so right now I'm just getting healthy, just taking some time off, let my body recover. Man, tell uh, Timmy G, stop doing that, just that ice and steam shit, man. No I shit. Still probably, yeah, I know he's still <laughs> probably doing that shit, bro. Oh, yeah, Don't yeah. Cut yeah, that yeah. shit out, bro. Yeah, get in the, yeah, we'll get in the hot tub, warm it up for practice. <laughs> nah. nah. Man, that, shit got then, Derek, that shit got Derek. Can't even walk up the stairs right now, bro. I ain't going to lie to you. That's where I, that's where, that's where I'm like, he's like, why haven't you come to me? I'm like, look, I know what you're going to tell me. Okay? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm out here on YouTube doing my own thing, you know, calling my people in Houston and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> dude. Yeah. So, so I got to get, I got to get that figured out. And then, man, I want to play. And, uh, you yeah. know, I'm not sure what that looks like or, or where it's going to be, but, you know, I'm open to anything and, uh, I'm excited for, for what's next because I know that, that, uh, you know, God is in control for me and, 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 Whatever happens, happens. Cool. No doubt, bro. Love Appreciate it, man. you, man. It's going, you got a hell of a career. Yeah. Um, wish you luck on your further career, bro. You're going to do great things for sure, man. And I know you got to leave Dan Dockett alone a little bit, bro. Give it a little time. <laughs> I, I, y'all, y'all told me that shit. You, you had some shit written up. You was kind of going to go crazy. Yeah. I, I almost wish you would have dropped that shit, bro. But yeah, shit. nah. But it, 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 it uh, you know, it helps him. You know more than it, and it, and it hurts. Oh, there's no for doubt. sure, no doubt about yeah. it. I'm, I'm right. done with that. I'm done with all there that. There you go. I can tell you, good deal. Man. So appreciate right, you, bro. Man, we man. appreciate we you having me, man. man. We'll chop it up with you, bro. Thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. Man. Beyond the Big Ten is a network of podcasts that aims to be your go-to resource for all things Big Ten. We cover the entire conference with shows hosted by ex-players and athletic alumni, aiming to be your go-to source of information and entertainment for your favorite team. Hosted by ex-Big Ten players, media, and insiders, our podcasts are focused on giving diehard fans and those alums an inside scoop about the teams and people that make the Big Ten Conference one of the most watched and most talked about conferences in sports. We're excited to talk Big Ten basketball with you wherever you may be. Subscribe now.